Greetings, and welcome to another thrilling episode of The Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host, and this is for the weekend beginning with Friday, November 22nd, 2019. Om Gam Ganapati <laughs> So you remove the obstacles to, to our path. So looking at the sky, the part where the moon is shrinking, it's a, it's a waning moon, and it's in the constellation of Virgo. And the part of Virgo that the uh, moon is in is the lunar mansion known as Hasta. So Hasta is the fist or the hand or the palm. Its ruling deity is Sabatar, which is the sun or another guise of the sun. The ruling planet to Hasta is actually the moon itself. And it's all within the constellation of Virgo as we're looking at the sky. You see, the deal is with tropical Western astrology, which is what most of this horoscope is about, is that you're not really, the majority of you aren't really Pisces sun or Cancer sun or Leo sun. Most of you are the sign back from that. That's what constellation actually the sun was in. And this is where astronomers and scientists go, no, 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 no. Astrology is not true. But there is sidereal and there's Vedic Jyotish astrology, which is based on where the planets are. And it's powerful stuff when you get to know it. <clears throat> and these things, the lunar mansions, are kind of like spiritual deities. I think they go back further than the signs of the zodiac from what I understand. So Hasta is all about industry and work. So this Friday, you know, there's this element of like work in Western astrology, moons in Libra. But we're not going to see it in that constellation if we look at it in the sky. We're going to see it in Virgo. That's the truth. And that's why Jyotish is called the light of truth. Those planets light up and they, uh, they bring you the real deal. So, um, the other thing that happened, interestingly enough, is that, seasonally speaking, the sun is in Sagittarius as of 7 o'clock this morning, Pacific Standard Time. So, Scorpio with, I create, I desire, the highest highs, lowest lows of the zodiac, yields to um, Sagittarius, whose key phrase is, I visualize. So, we're in a much more visual place in our um, in our horoscope so <clears throat> let us see what else is going on here well we've got um, Sun moving into Sagittarius Mercury went direct last week so we've got on Wednesday so we've got Mercury direct now that's kind of fun Venus is in Sagittarius and both Western and Vedic astrology, but Venus is moving her butt into Capricorn this week um, on the 25th at 4.29 p.m. in the tropical zodiac. You'll, you'll find Venus still in the constellation of Sagittarius while we're doing this. The other thing that's neat about that is Venus and Jupiter are conjoining each other. They're really <coughs> close and Venus and Jupiter are the two gurus. Um, Venus is the guru of the humans or the demons, and Jupiter is guru to the gods and to our more spiritual things. So, but there should be this. Mm, you know, they're both really good friends of mine. You know, they're 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 like my bodyguards. I call them on both sides of my sun. One side has Venus, one side has Jupiter. So they're they're watching out for me. I hope they're watching out for you. They generally watch out for everybody. Um, so that's another thing. And you can look at that when you're looking in the constellation of Sagittarius. You can see Venus and Jupiter um, getting closer and closer. And we have a new moon this week on the 26th. 
at 7.06 a.m. And that new moon is going to be in the lunar mansion or nakshatra known as Anurata. And Anurata is um, all within the constellation of Scorpio. And it's ruled by Saturn. And its ruling deity is Mitra. And it's all about making alliances and friendships and going to other countries and Lotus and even in adversity because, you know, Mars and uh, Saturn are kind of adverse planets in some ways. Um, they bloom beautifully. So this new moon is about making connections, even amidst adversity and death and hard hard karma and stuff. And that's, uh, that's the lunar mansion known as Anurata. Okay. Now, anything else happening this week? So we, we heard Venus is going into tropical Capricorn. Um, Mars is in Scorpio. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, in the tropical. You know, he's still in the constellation of Libra. Um, you know, and, and then we've got, of course, Saturn in Capricorn, Uranus in Taurus, Neptune in Pisces, and Pluto in Capricorn and uh, North Node in Cancer. <clears throat> so, one by one, here we go. Greetings Aries, welcome to your horoscope. Um, we can't always get what we want, we can't always be in control. But here's the thing, you know, now that we've got Jupiter, Sun, even Venus in your ninth house, there's a good amount of good fortune coming your way. You're luckier than usual. Now, Mars is in the 8th house, which is transformation. It's letting go, and it's other people's property. So, so one of the best things for you to do is just release it. It's like, ah, okay. I'm just letting go of this. I'm going to release <clears throat> and be on my way so that um, things will have a chance to get better. And that's that's what we want. You know, we want things to have that chance to be better. So this could be a real opportunity for new learning, new healing, for travel, all of these things. New moon is in, you know, Sagittarius as far as Western astrology goes. Not the constellation, of course, but, you know, it's in your ninth house. We'll be in your ninth house as well Tuesday morning, so... More good, you know. You're, you're in a lucky place. Good things are going to happen to you. And I want those good things to continue for you. All right. <clears throat> With that said, greetings, Taurus, and welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, for Taurus, it's like, Scorpio is sort of like the eye of the hurricane. It's like, oh, I can take it easy now. I've got the seventh house. I can relax, make good alliances with people, have romance, better job, careers. And then, er, breaks get put on. Sun's moving into the eighth house. Eighth house is about occult studies, things like astrology, the tarot, um, other religions. All of these things are emphasized. <clears throat> and the mysteries. And, you know, even lust sex, death, other people's property, these are all 8th house issues, so that's going to be hugely the focus for Taurus right now, and I think the best thing to do during an 8th house transit is ask for help, because since it deals with other people's energy and other people's property so much, other people can help you, and the 8th house is a hard house, they say it's like the roughest one, some people say, it's a Dastana house, as we, we call them, and in Vedic astrology, and um, you know the sixth, the eighth, and the twelfth—they're they're more difficult houses to negotiate. So, you know, a little bit of knowledge <clears throat> is a good thing. It can help. Um, let's see. We got yeah, Mercury is a long way off from uh, Sagittarius right now. So, what did I do with that main thing? Yeah. The moon, yes. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to Gemini. Greetings, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, what we're seeing here is a lot of negotiation, a lot of opportunities, a lot of influence. This is a really good weekend for romance for you in a lot of ways, at least Friday and, um, and Saturday. Because the moon is in your fifth house, so your heart's open. And then all these planets are in your, um, 
in your seventh house. You know, the seventh house is a house of relationships, marriage, contracts, sometimes open enemies, although in Vedic astrology they say the enemies are more in the sixth house. So I've never quite figured that one out. I mean, the sixth house is tougher, so that makes more sense to me in a lot of ways. And, you know, in the seventh house, since it has kind of more of this mellowed out Libran, you know, well, we got to be balanced about things. But sometimes the balance gets imbalanced. Well, they stole from me, I'll steal from them. You know, that kind of thinking, um, you know. And, and so it's very, uh, it's, it's really difficult to um, put that in some kind of perspective. But I, I would say that um, your love relationships are, are going to be better. And uh, you're in a place where you're moving towards some kind of transformation. But in the meantime, it's like relax, breathe, keep working on health issues. Mercury direct in the sixth house. It should be helping. You might be making a little extra money. And then we move over to Cancer. <clears throat> All right. So, greetings, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. Mm. Well, I mean, that north node in the first house, you know, it gives you that hunger that has no bottom. <laughs> Yeah, North Node is, you know, starting to get into those first 10 degrees of Cancer. So, Cancer is born, you know, between June 21st to, like, the, the 5th of July. You're getting more of the North Node hit than other people right now. And so, it's about um, wanting to advance yourself by any means necessary you know it's, it's like the the women that wanted to uh, go to sea and be in the navy in the in the um, 19th century you know they'd dress up like a guy and uh, do things that was before we had um, TGs you know you know TGs a big you know it's, it's a much more it's more trendy right now <clears throat> um, and, uh, you know, relationships are huge. In fact, relationships can improve because, like, this week Venus is going to go into your seventh house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And so you become just a little bit more lovable, and it softens some of the effects Saturn has had. So it intensifies the lovey, lusty part of Pluto. And, um, and, and Jupiter's on its way there, too. I mean, Jupiter will eventually get there. My goodness, I just realized this, that I don't, I must have dropped Jupiter somewhere, because I don't see it on the wheel. Oh, no. <laughs> that is so, that is so frustrating. That makes so much sense, though, too. <laughs> but, yeah, Jupiter should be there. <clears throat> and it's not, and I didn't notice. Okay, well, I'll work on that. Okay. Well, greetings, Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. Well, I mean, Sagittarius time for Leo is pretty wonderful because um, Sagittarius rules your fifth house, and the fifth house is a house of children. It's a house of love affairs to some extent. Matters of the heart, you know, your creative expression, education, willing to be a teacher, willing to be a father, or that kind of figure to somebody. That's all fifth house stuff. And fifth house is full. Fifth house is good with Jupiter and Venus. I mean, Venus is leaving. She's leaving her her realm of the fifth house um, relatively soon. And um, <clears throat> this week, I guess that's Tuesday that happens, right? Or uh, Monday night, Monday afternoon. Um, and so... Uh, you know, you're, you're getting ready for a bunch of work. But meanwhile, you might as well just enjoy it. The new moon's going to be great for you. It's going to be a new start. It's going to be a chance for you to renew your heart and hopefully experience that healing heart medicine that you really long for. Who doesn't long for healing heart medicine? Sounds good. I need some healing heart medicine myself. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, 
All right, we'll go to Virgo. So greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. <clears throat> Sagittarius rules your fourth house. Um, this is like your relationship with your mother, older adults in your family. It's also where you find kind of your own happiness, your own comfort zone, where you're aware of things. And the things we're aware of in the fourth house is our roots, you know. You know so my roots are mostly, you know, Irish and Lebanese, and there's a little bit of Spanish and French mi mixed in there, and some Ashkenazi Jew, and it's like, oh man, that's a lot of mixture. That's a lot of stuff. Um, and now we got DNA tests to prove it. Whoa. <laughs> and so um, that's part of the coming. And so what's going on with you is you kind of want to be a homebody more these days. But you're also ready to break out creatively and artistically. So there's this kind of formation in your imagination of what your next project, your next step, your next move towards leadership, what you want to do about your kids if you have children, and how to move forward with all of that. And like in relationships, you're looking for a spiritual relationship. It's like, it's elusive. It's like, I can't get it. I can't find it. Who, where, where do they have these kind of women? I don't know, you know. And, you know, are they... Are they all looking like the bride of Frankenstein or, you know, or like Cass Elliot's sister? I'm not sure, you know, but, you know, it, it, you know, no offense to Cass Elliot. She's a great singer, um, you know, and, and we just, we want things good, but we don't always get what we want. All right. So, greetings, Libra. And welcome to your horoscope. Um, well, we're starting out Friday with the moon in your first house, so for most of you. And so, yeah, it makes it a very Venus, Venus day in, in some ways. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing better. And you've had a lot of grace. You have diplomacy. You know how to work, work the neighborhood. You know how to do things. And um, and and then you've got a lot of you're working your money right now, you know, and whatever might have been lost during Mercury retrograde, it's coming back to you. So you don't have to worry. You're you're gonna you're gonna work it out. You're gonna make it. You're gonna fulfill it. Um, Sagittarius time mostly about friends and friendships, siblings, especially if you have younger siblings. They're somewhat in the picture. Sometimes cousins. People you went to school with, you know, from elementary school through undergrad. Um, mostly stuff, I think, that happens between 14 and 21 is the third house. The third house is a place for courage. And so to take more courage in your life, about your life, what you're doing, where you're going, what you want to do next. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you need to work on health issues. Um, money from other people gets taken away, comes to you as a surprise. You're hoping to make a better career life for yourself. Okay. Greeting Scorpio, welcome to your horoscope. Well, pressure's off, you know. Sun's no longer in Scorpio, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, Sun's now in your second house, along with Jupiter. This is, this is going to actually bring you some money. Venus is there, some cash flow. So I see this kind of wealth coming to Scorpio, especially Scorpio risings. But you're doing better. You're getting your needs met. <coughs> and, um, and so that's, that's another way of making it. Um, there's a lot of planets in the second house, so that is helping you with money and then later on this week venus moves into the third house and mars is in scorpio and not in, yeah so it's in your first house so you've got a lot of drive mercury's in your first house so you've got a lot of information you've got some good ideas and you just need to implement them and you just have to be careful not to say anything too offensive you know or write anything too offensive don't text something fa offensive or 
comment on social media something offensive because um, anything is potentially offensive I mean really uh, um, even if it's just slightly aggressive or passive aggressive we have people with the with the strength of sensitivity of wet toilet paper they can fall apart any moment and um, and they would love nothing more than to blame it on you <laughs> It's pathetic. I mean, Moon's going to be in Scorpio this week, too, right? Sure, we've got Moon in Scorpio on um, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday. Okay, so. So, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Scorpio, as you come into power. All right. Okay, so, greetings, Sagittarius, and welcome to your horoscope. And yes, you are the flavor of the month. You made it. That 12th house transit is over. It's gone. Put out of your mind. Everything's good now. Do you love it when you wake up and you feel like everything's good? Um, it's better. You know, you still have Jupiter. still have Venus with you. You've got, um, you know, Saturn's teaching you to be more disciplined with your finances. Same thing with Pluto. It's like saying, well, you know, things change all the time. Same thing with the South Node. It's like, um, you know... What you have or don't have is just because this is what you deserve right now, and this is and don't don't take it personally. Um, there's a lot of really good people that are like born into poverty, and are never able to get out. Um, pay attention to your dreams. You know you've had a lot of restless dreams, restless speech. There's some people that don't have your back out there, so it's like you're still dealing a little bit with the twelfth house karma thing. Um, moon is new this week in Sagittarius on Tuesday. So Tuesday morning, the real you emerges. That beautiful form of yourself comes out in all its glory. So that's a good thing. Okay. Well, well, well. If it isn't my old friend Capricorn, greetings Capricorn, welcome to your horoscope. Um... I mean, now that the sun's in Sagittarius, sun's in your 12th house, Jupiter's in your 12th house, Venus is in your 12th house, Venus is going to go in your first house Monday afternoon, so you're going to feel a little more love. You're going to feel like, hmm, okay, I'm looking a little better. Um, and it's going to join up with Saturn in the south node of the moon. So it's like, there's been a lot of rough stuff happening, but now, you know, it's like this kind of presence of Lakshmi. It's like, hey, I want to give you something. I want to bring good people, you know, that are loving, kind, you know, and graceful, hip. They're coming, they're coming into your presence. And Jupiter's going to be there, too. I mean, Jupiter doesn't do Capricorn a lot of good, <laughs> because Capricorn is just based on Earth, and, you know, nuts and bolts and logic and things like that. They're very smart people, but they're not, like, super faith-based and, I mean, even if they're science-based, science is changing constantly. So, talk about an inconsistent religion. <laughs> you know, it's reliable, well, sort of, till the new theory comes out. Mm, think about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and some science is sponsored by bigger, deeper pockets. And so, they'll report what they want you to hear. Uh-oh. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Do they do that? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are scientists willing to, to share a lie for some good money. <laughs> After all, this is America, and if you don't have health care, you're in, you're in deep doo-doo, and it costs a lot of money to get medically stuff done. So, so we pay for lies, and we need pay so we don't get sick, or if we do get sick, we get help. It's weird, but it's true. Greetings Aquarius, welcome to your horoscope. Um, Sagittarius time. Well, it's the 11th house, so there's a lot of parties now. There's a lot of socializing. There's a lot of um, chance to get to know your neighbor, meet your neighbor, have fun with your neighbor, um, older siblings, people that are older that can help you. And a lot of times the 11th house is really political, like people are really into politics. They're into politics because they feel like they are better than everyone. <laughs> no, I mean, they're 
there's a point where you create a situation where it's really hard for common people to live. And I think that's been the trend in this country for the last hmm, 39 years, you know, give or take. And so um, how to elevate. We're only as strong as our weakest links. And some people, the people that have things already and aren't weak, they don't see that because they're satisfied and they're just mad. They're threatened by those who are weak because they might want some of what they have. So I, I get it. That's how the whole little game works. Um, but anyhow, you're looking good at work. You have good ideas. You're taking leadership. You're having a really fun social life coming up. And this is also like kind of your karma time too, you know, where you have to be aware of losses and things that aren't working for yourself. Um, you know, there's a lot of movement in your home and among older relatives, so that's something to consider. And you're trying to work on your own health to be better in every way. All right. Okay. Well, greetings, Pisces. Welcome to your horoscope. So Sagittarius time for you is about the midheaven of career and you should be doing good. We've got Sun, Jupiter there, um, Venus there still. And so these things are all bringing, they're bringing truth, they're bringing love, they're bringing spirituality and good fortune. And you've got a good relationship with the public right now. They see what you got and what you want and they're going to bring it to you and so and so this new moon could also mean career advancement for you possibly that's it's a possibility and and getting more of what you need that way so all of that is um positive and pleasant you got a nice spiritual outlook and um you you're doing new things interesting innovative things creatively and it's all going to pay off and the deal is, you've been great. And thank you for being here. This is Cosmic Kev with the Cosmic Forecast, the Planetary Persuader. Please um, subscribe, share this on one of your pages, and uh, feel free to comment. I, I love hearing from you. Look forward to being with you next week when we do this again. All right. Cut.